please, because it's quite hard. There's no PA here, so we're going to speak loudly. But if you talk as well, it's going to be very difficult. So please keep your voices down, okay? If you've got questions, please try and keep them to the end. We, this session will take about 20 minutes. Then we'll have a separate session for just the parents, okay? Competitors must leave the room, take about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We'll talk to the parents directly um, at that point, and then we can answer any, any queries that the parents may still have, okay? As Steve mentioned, this is the biggest race yet. This is the 10th time we've run the Junior Challenge. This year, we started with a target of around 500 competitors to be in the race. The response was absolutely overwhelming, okay? Our website application system was overwhelmed within about 28 hours from us opening it to actually filling up. We extended it and now we've increased it by about another 150 places to try and get more people in because we realize there's a lot of people out there that want to take part in this race. It's a very unique race, it's a very special race. We believe it's the biggest in Asia, possibly the biggest in the world because it really focuses on adventure racing for kids and that's quite a rare event. Okay, so kicking off, there's a couple more committee members I'd like to, to wave their hands. Joe, Joe Hurley's here as well. Tim, Tim on board. Thank you very much for Ken Lawrence from the brand doing our video over there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to these committee members because they're all we're all volunteers. We just do this in our spare time. We meet together to put this race together. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, so swiftly moving on. I see a lot of people here are wearing your shirts. How many people here have done the race before? Oh, what are you doing to this briefing then? I thought this was for the newbies. No, no, no problem. How many, then the other way around, how many of you competitors have not done this race before? All right, okay, there's a good number here. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. All right. You guys, let's stop. Listen, okay? You've got two ears and one mouth. Please keep your mouth quiet for the moment and just use your ears because what you're going to hear is very important. All right? What we're going to say, very important. So listen and absorb it, okay? Now, swiftly moving on. There are, we've changed the race structure this year to actually define it, define it into three races, okay? We have junior race, an inters race, and a senior. So if you're not sure what you're in, you know your age group category, i.e. if you're eight years old, you're in the under nines, that means you're a junior. So the under nines, under tens, under elevens are in the juniors, the inters are the under twelves and under thirteens, and the seniors are under fourteens, sixteens, and nineteens, okay? Adventure racing, what's it about? Okay, it's about running, it's about climbing, it's about going along roads, going along trails, it's about going on bits of the coast, through the sea, up the gorges, it's great. Everywhere that we can get you to run in DB, pretty much we'll get you to run. You'll do biking as well, okay? The biking is not going to be very technical, but generally it's going to be along the roads and along the bike paths, okay? There's a couple of small paths that perhaps aren't on the bike path, but nothing difficult at all, okay? There's also going to be an obstacle course, as we set up last year. We'll have that set up on the beach. A lot of people enjoyed that, so we'll do that again. There will be a water jump. Everybody loves the water jump. Yeah. There, will be, there will be special tests again, but I think I promise we're not going to do Sudoku, because everybody went mad when we did Sudoku. Yeah. Enters and the seniors will be involved in the kayaking, and there will be absolutely involved for the seniors. Timing! All registrations are going to be done at the DBS kindergarten, okay? Right next to the fire station, alright? Does everyone know where that is? Good. What we've done is we've broken it down. Like I said, we've got three races going on. So effectively, we're going to register the seniors early from 7 a.m. And their races will start more or less with one hour, within an hour, okay? So I'm putting on here about 7.50, all right? It's a special start for the seniors, we need to get them assembled. Once you've registered at the DBS kindergarten, you will be asked to wait in the DBS car park, right next to the kindergarten. That car park space, normally the golf carts used, etc. You'll be asked to wait in there, okay? The inters registration, okay, that's under 12s, under 13s, they will register at 8 a.m. And again, they'll be racing from about 9. And the juniors will register at 10, and they will be racing, sorry, registering at 9. The juniors registering at 9. Sorry, it's a mistake, yeah. Well, yeah, sorry. This one should be basically the juniors should register at 10 a.m., and they'll be racing before 11. Okay, so what we try to do here is we try to break down the sequencing. No, it's 9 and 10. All right, well spotted. Sorry for the mistake. So we're basically saying here, yeah, Inter's registering at 8 a.m., that's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and then they'll be racing for 9. Junior to register at 9 a.m. Let me yeah. fix this right now. Can, can fix that on the... <coughs> okay, sorry about that mistake. 
Juniors registering at 9 a.m. So let's just clarify once more, to make it clear if everyone understands. Okay, seniors have to register first because we're going to get them off. The sequencing that we're doing here is to get the fastest runners out of the way. Okay, and then we use the, the middle, the inters, to get them off, and then we get the juniors. The reason why we do that is because we don't want faster runners overtaking slower runners on the course. It's a safety thing. Okay, so basically we get the fastest runners off first, the next fastest, and then the last groups from going. The way we've done it this year as well, we've structured it so there's not so much waiting time for the juniors as well, because we always had a later start for the juniors before we were registering the juniors at 7.30 a.m. Sometimes they weren't racing until 10 a.m. Okay, that's an awful long time. So we've structured it better this year. We believe that will help, okay? Obviously, if you were parents that you've got kids in both sections, then unfortunately you still have to make sure that your respective kid is there for the appropriate time. We cannot register you early, please, because we've got 650 kids to manage this, this race time. We really need to break it down to these lumps so we can physically manage all the bodies going through. Okay? So everyone clear about the registration and start times? Okay, so where's the registration happening? Okay, and the starts will actually happen very close by the poster, just by the corner. Okay, so just literally across the road. But don't worry about that. Once you're registered, you'll be kept in the car park area and then we'll move you out in your age groups basically towards the start area. Start area. Okay? Of course, it will start at La Costa. So like I said, on that corner of La Costa, more or less, you know, very near the bus station. Okay? And it will finish in the North Plaza, DB North Plaza. Okay, same finish point as last year. For those people on the courses, the juniors will follow the orange colored marked ribbons. The inters will follow the blue ribbons and the seniors will follow the yellow ribbons, okay? So if you're not sure about where to run, which way to go, you'll follow the, these colors. Don't worry, there'll be plenty of marshals. I'm hoping the parents are gonna help us out with that. Plenty of marshals and officials on the way to guide the kids, okay? The kids themselves will all have different numbers and also colors on their helmets, so it's easy to work out which section they're in. The race officials will wear red tops like this, very similar to this, all right? So please listen to them if they have advice or the information, and it's important to pay attention to them. Safety. Safety is absolutely our primary concern, okay? We have run this race, like I say, this is the 10th time, and short of people needing stitches, there's nothing severe that's actually happened. I touch wood now, you know, say that. But, uh, you know, really, we haven't had any broken bones. We haven't had anything uh, significant in terms of that, that that's really happened. And we believe that's down to the preparation uh, and also the, 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 you know, the steps that we take in terms of planning this route. The route will be challenging. The idea and the concept of an adventure race is to put you into an area that's outside your comfort zone. There's no point if you were just running on a race around a track at the school because that's pretty boring. So the idea of adventure race is it pushes you beyond your comfort zone to experience things that perhaps you wouldn't do. But don't worry, we've considered this very carefully from the safety side and we believe that the course is very, very safe. Of course, there are inherent dangers. Anyone can fall over. Anyone can trip up and bang their elbow or scrape their knee. That can happen at any time, okay? But there's nothing here significant that you need to worry about. The key things that you need to do for us is make sure you have your bike helmet, and your gloves on at all times, okay? If you have either, if you're missing either of these things, you will not be able to run the race. If you're missing them halfway through the race, the officials will stop you and prevent you carrying on because we do not consider it safe unless you've got this equipment, basic equipment. Okay. We'll talk more about equipment in a minute. The things that you should have for the race, apart from bike helmet and gloves that like we've said, try and have some kind of water bottle a camel back if you've got one ideally, but a water bottle is fine. You can, have, you can carry that. Make sure you've got appropriate shorts. Don't wear the big long beach baggies. The reason is that they get very heavy when they're wet, and they tend to shake, and they're not very, very comfortable when they're running, perhaps when you're wet, okay? Try and wear trainers. You want something with a grip, so that when you're on the rocks or when you're on something slippy, you're gonna have a chance to grip properly, okay? Not flat tennis shoes. Wear proper socks. I know that the fashion now is to wear the little Diddy Anki's angle socks, but don't because sand, gravel can fall down very easily into your socks, and you don't want that. You want your socks to come up and protect your ankles a bit more. Make sure your bike is working well. We'll talk about that in a minute, about the bike, but it's important that your bike is safe, that the brakes work, the tires are pumped up, and make sure that you have some sunscreen applied for the race. Looking at the long range forecast, it looks like it's gonna be bright and sunny, temperature around 23 degrees. 
Water. The biggest danger you've probably got on the day is not drinking enough. Okay, many people underestimate because when they're, especially when they're running, they've been out on the course for maybe a couple of hours, it's very, very easy to dehydrate. So we always say to you, drink. That's why we ask you to carry water. But we will provide water at the strategic points around the race. Watson, I mean, sorry, welcome, our main sponsor, helping us with water. So they're going to be able, we're going to be able to provide that to people who need it. So please, like I say, drink water to rehydrate. And after the race, okay, bring yourself a dry bag with some things that you can change into. The reason is that if you've just gone through the sea, or you've just done a wood jump, or you've just got very, very hot and sweaty, you don't want to stay like that for a long time. Okay, so if you've got something that you can change into, some fresh clothes, some fresh footwear, or some flip flops, or something like that, it's going to be much, much more comfortable. <coughs> okay, injuries. Again, touch wood, we've never had any major injuries, but however, this is our setup. Okay, we have a very organized system basically of marshals who are then broken, uh, supervised by section leaders who are supervised also by a chief marshal. So we have a quite a sophisticated network on how to support the, the competitors when they're out there. The whole concept of an adventure race is it's not an individual sport, it's a team sport. It's something that you have to do with an individual. You need to start, you need to run, and you need to finish with your, with your teammate. And if you're not in sight of your teammate, and I literally mean talking about 10 yards, then your marshals will be saying to you, where's your teammate? Slow down. You've got to run with your teammate. Because the concept is you look after each other. Okay? When you're running that race, and maybe you're okay, but maybe your teammate's feeling a bit tired, then you've got to encourage them to help them. Okay? You start that together as a team, and you finish it together as a team. You guys understand? Okay. If you have an accident, then... If you are a team of three, which are the juniors, the under nines, under tens, under elevens, okay? If you can't see an official, then one of you can stay with your uh, teammate who's been hurt, maybe they banged their leg or something, and the other one can find the next official. Just run down, carry on to the course and find the next official. If you're just a team of two, the under, under uh, elevens, sorry, under twelves, under thirteens, or the under fourteens, sixteens, and nineteens, just stay together, okay? Don't worry. If you can't see an official, the next team that comes, comes along, just tell them, we've got a hurt member of our team, can you please tell the next official? Okay, and that's what you do, you pass the message on. Again, we have a lot of section leaders, we have a lot of marshals that will be out on the course on the day. I'm very confident that we can get help to any hurt individual within minutes. Okay, I'm confident of that. So the point is here, look after your teammate, that's the key thing, all right? We will have trained nurses at strategic points in the course. We know where there's possibly high risk areas of people scraping their leg, etc. And we will also have trained nurses and support in the first aid at the finish, okay, where people need to get patched up or bandaged, etc. Any team that wants to withdraw must inform one of our race officials. Okay? You must do that because we know how many kids have got into this race, we know all the specifics, and we need to know how many kids finish. That's a critical, critical point. You cannot just think, oh, I'm a bit fed up, we're near the plaza, let's go down to, you know, and, and go to McDonald's. You can't do that, okay? You have to tell the race officials. Nobody on the course can be left behind. Because we have a system called the sweep system. What that means is we have one of the officials will actually run the last part of the race. They will actually follow with the last competitors. Follow them all the way along. And therefore, we can scoop up anybody that's left behind Anybody that may, you know, be a bit slow, etc., we will scoop them up. And we have to account for everybody at the other side of the race as well. Like I say, we know how many started this race, and we know how many have finished. We've never lost anyone yet. Okay. <laughs> rules summary. The full rules, I think, are on our website, but this is just a summary. The team numbers will give you those, you'll display those on your helmet, okay? Your, your stickers that will be on your helmet will give you a team number. You'll also have the color. So if you're in the junior section, it'll be orange. If you're in the seniors, it'll be yellow. If you're in the intermediates, it'll be blue, okay? The safety equipment which I'm talking about is your helmet and your gloves. Very important, okay? Really, the gloves will help you if you have to put your hand down sometimes or grab a rock or something, it protects you an awful lot. And your helmet is critical to protect your head. There is no outside support allowed, so there's no calling up mum, oh, I'm a bit tired, can you get the golf cart and pick me up, please, and turn me around it? That's not allowed, okay? Wouldn't be very fair. Teams, like I said, have to start, run, and finish together. And if you're not in sight, if you're not in close proximity to your teammate, then you need to stop, slow down, and let them catch up. 
Withdrawal of a team is only via the officials. Time penalties, course changes may be imposed. The reason why we say this is sometimes if competitors come up against a challenge and they think they're scared, maybe they're looking at the water jump, or maybe they're looking at a bit they've got to climb and they're a bit worried about it, they don't have to do it. You guys can say, look, I'm really, I really, really don't want to do it. If that's the case, not a problem. What we'll do is we'll just assign a time penalty to the team. We'll hold the team a little bit back. They can sidestep that particular bit of the challenge, and then they can carry on. Okay, that's sometimes why we might do a time penalty. Okay, and why we might do course changes? Because we want to get all the racing over by 1 p.m. Right? We don't want kids out there for hours and hours and hours. Okay, that's not the idea. It's not an endurance thing. We really want people to enjoy themselves. So if the kids are, on, are there are past a certain time, past about three hours, two, three hours, we'll cut it off. And we'll see the next kids. We know where they're running along because our officials are in contact with each other. And we'll actually then put those kids through shortcuts in the race so they can get to the finish earlier and quicker. All right? There's no point, let's say, torturing people out there. They're not enjoying things. The full results will be available on our, on our, our website by about midweek, so we think Wednesday, 30th of November, okay? Of course, we're gonna know who the top finishers are, we all, we'll always know that. But if people wanna know their exact time, exactly where they came in, then we would say, don't ask us on the day. There's an awful lot of information, 650 kids, uh, 200 odd teams, basically. It means that we've got a lot of information to juggle, so we just wanna get that right before we, before we give you uh, information, okay? Um, if you do have any concern, and you think something didn't happen right, then of course you can, you can make a query and a protest all right, to any official and say, look, something went wrong, I didn't understand why this happened, or why was my team held back, or whatever. You have that query, it's not a problem, but please just be polite about it, okay? But, on the one here, at the end of the day, the race official's decision is final. It's a bit like when you're playing football, the referee's decision is final on the day, okay? Everyone understand those rules? Okay. Okay, very important. This is really for the parents and guardians. Unless we've got your waiver, then teams cannot run. Okay, the waiver is basically saying that you guys understand that this is an adventure race and there is some inherent risk involved. And also, if your bike is deemed to be not working or not safe, then possibly you cannot use the bike on that section. And that means you'll end up doing a lot of running. So you probably will want to make sure your bike is okay. Right? The weather, like I say, the long range weather forecast for Sunday the 27th is good, all right, nice and sunny. If the weather is very bad, and I mean like <coughs> snowing, then maybe we might put the race off. If it's a little bit of light rain, we're definitely gonna go ahead with the rain. It's only one year in the 10 years that we've, this is the 10th year, the nine years we've done this, we've had to actually postpone the race, and that was because of a serious hill fire that actually swept all of the back of DB. It actually wiped out the course, our course markings, trees were burnt down and everything else, it was black out there. That year we actually had to postpone the race significantly. But I don't see you know, uh, an issue for us having to postpone this year. However, if we do, there will be a fallback which will be the following Sunday. Okay, and the reason why we do this, we do this because it's all for a good cause. At the end of the day, the money's over and above what we need to spend for on items of the race. We give away to the Youth Outreach Charity. We picked to this charity, we've been working with them for the last five years really because they're, they're a children's focused charity as well. They help underprivileged kids in Hong Kong. And the thing I'd like to point out to some of your competitors is that you guys, if you're in this race, you're actually quite well off. Okay, you haven't got any big problems in terms of like some of these kids. Some of these kids don't know where they're gonna sleep at night time sometimes. They don't know what they're gonna eat for dinner. They don't know if they're gonna eat for dinner. Okay, some of these kids are really in a, in a poor way. So therefore, we ask you to help them. What we'd like you to help us do is use the sponsor forms and go to your aunties, your uncles, your grandparents and say, look, I'm going to do this race. Will you help sponsor me? Will you help me raise some money for this charity? If you do, we would love that every team could raise about $500, okay, to help for this charity and it would be great. We do an award also for people who raise the most money. Also, we did an award for people who actually got the most individual. We could actually see from the sponsor board some of the kids who went around and asked individuals for small amounts, $5, $10, $15, like that. And they built up a huge, you know, not perhaps not a lot of money, but because they Open, they, they got it from so many individuals. We were very impressed with that because that's a lot harder to do rather than just going to, you know, your granddad and him giving you five hundred dollars. Okay. So we organised some prizes for that. And if you do raise money that way, please send it by check or we can use it by PayPal also uh, to Jerry Gray, care of uh, Team Fear Marine Club. 
by the 31st of January. The reason why we say that is because we understand some of you go away for Christmas and maybe that's the time when you're going to go back and see some of your folks, etc. And you can sort that money out. And it gives a chance for the sponsorship monies to come in, basically. We generally make an award out to Youth Outreach and any of you are welcome to come along to do that. We actually present them with a big check uh, in around February, March time, depending on the, on the circumstances. Okay, like I said, safety is our highest priority. Um, the dangerous areas, sometimes there will be dangerous and careful areas. We will station extra marshals and extra officials in all of those areas. But please pay attention to them. If they're telling you to slow down, it's for a reason, all right? It's possibly something that could be very significant and you have to pay attention to. Okay, so the next things that we're gonna need for you guys to do is hopefully see you at the bike check. That'll be the helipad at the marina club. Do you guys know when that is? Marina club, helipad, okay. That's on Saturday the 26th from 10 a.m., all right? Um, and of course, if you've got mums, dads, if you're able to help us out on that morning as well, it'd be very helpful because we've been doing light checks, we'll be checking that the brakes work, the eyes are coming up, etc., to make sure the bikes are safe. Okay? Okay, Okay, I'd like to pass it over to uh, Oh, yeah. Just a couple of reminders. different when you're doing the race. Remember there's going to be 650 other kids doing that race. So even if you're confident running up gorgeous on your own, when there's been 600 people ahead of you, they get very slippy. 600 people walking through, through a bit of water, passed on up there, things get very slippy. So that's why it's important to make sure to go slow in areas like that. Even if you know the area and you've, been, you've done the race before, still be very careful. Be very careful doing that. Um, also on the bike, remember you know that also you pick the bike up at the end of the day. Last year there was always like about five or six bikes there at six o'clock are still sitting there in the bike drop off. We do not have anybody to look after the bikes after the race. So please pick up your bike straight after the race. If you go lock, go and pick it up straight away and go and lock it somewhere. We're not, we, we don't provide a guard after the race to look after the bikes. So please, please take your bikes after the race. Um, I'll go through some other things with the parents as well. I think we'll just we'll leave that. Okay. With right. One final thing on the safety. We stress how important it is for you to be turned out well. Okay. So I'd like to ask Alan to come out here and show us how not to look for the race. Okay. <laughs> Alright, if you can see here, Alan's wearing two hats, alright? He's got his bike helmet on, which is not strapped up, and he's got another hat on underneath, obviously. That's not a good fit, you should just have the one. He's got things dangling off the back, off the front here, that could you know, bounce around and hit him and things like that. He looks like he's got his dad's mittens, alright, from skin, okay? That's not going to be very good. Oh, the other one is... We have seen it before, yes. They do turn up with the rubber gloves, all right? So if you're wondering on the Sunday, where's my rubber gloves gone, okay? It might well be because your dearest and nearest perhaps didn't get their gloves organized in advance. If you need to, even the cheap workman's gloves, the cotton gloves, cheap, cheap workman's gloves, you can buy them in the maintenance shop here. I think they're only a few dollars. They'll do fine, okay? It's the idea is to protect themselves. What else, Alan? Shoes. His shoes are flat soled, okay? That's no good for climbing on rocks or for slippy areas, all right? Shorts. He's got dinky short socks on, that's no good, alright? I know they're trendy, but no good. He's got a huge bag here. <laughs> He's got enough stuff in the kitchen sink and everything else, and the toilet roll. Okay? Please don't come with that much stuff, you don't need to, okay? You want to be keeping yourself light and easy to run. He's got the wrong shorts on. This is not the kind of shorts we need. We need you to run with proper sports shorts. Things that if they get wet, you're still going to be able to run unimpeded. Like that, that's fine. Okay, we have Steve come out here. <laughs> Steve is a seasoned adventure racer, hence he was, he was the founder of Why We Do Team Fear. Alright, as you can see here, he's looking trim, he's got proper shoes and socks on. Can you stand out here, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got proper shoes and socks on. He's got a camel back. Again, it's not obligatory, but if you've got one, very useful, very handy. Okay, you can drink out of that. He's got a helmet that's done up, okay? He's even had a shave for today as well. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got good gloves on as well, all right? They're not woolen mittens, they're not skiing gloves, okay? It's something that's gonna be you know, uh, useful and appropriate for the day. He's got shorts on that aren't gonna chafe his legs if they get wet. 
you don't have a camel bag, you still need some sort of small bag to carry your water in. You don't want to be carrying the water in your hand. Yeah. Both hands free. Yeah. Some free. people have run with the belts, with the bottle in, that's fine too. You know, the, the jogging belts, that's okay, no problem. The idea is keep your hands free so that you're full and you can steady yourself. Okay, at this point, I'll give the floor open to a few minutes just for the kids. Any key questions from the competitors? This is the first time in nine years, ten years, we've never had a question on the floor. Okay, one here, one here on the corner, get over here. Okay, yeah, the question is, can you have gloves with the cut off fingers? We don't mind. You can use, sometimes people use the cycling gloves, which have no fingers, that's okay. Or you can have the full gloves. Obviously, if you've got full gloves, it's a bit more protection, that's all. Full gloves are made of We cannot tell you the course. The question is, are we going to the rock rules? The idea and the concept of what we do each year is that we don't tell the competitors the course. We can tell that to the parents, okay, and then they've got to keep that shtub in secret. But the idea is we're not going to tell you in advance, okay? That would be fair. The question was, if you, what do you get if you win the race? Quietly! You won't hear the answer. The question was, what do you get if you win the race? For the, for the fastest competitor teams in their group, and what we do is we break that down by, say, the under nines, then we actually have the fastest boys, the fastest girls, and the fastest mixed teams. All in all, we give out 57 cups to winners who are the fastest in their category. But apart from that, everyone who completes the race gets a medal because we believe that you're all heroes, you've com you competed in an adventure race, and it's significant and it's challenging, so everyone gets a medal. If you go off track, okay. We don't believe you go off track because we mark the course. You should follow the color ribbons for your age group. So you follow the orange ribbons, you'll always be in sight of the next ribbon, okay? However, saying that, we've also got officials and marshals on the course to keep you on track, okay? <laughs> If it did happen, yeah, it would be unusual if it did, but retrace your steps. If you can't see any more orange ribbons, then go back the way you came to get back to the track, okay? <laughs> okay, the bike drop, the final bike drop will be in front of the hotel in the North Plaza. Okay, so everyone will end up riding their bikes down to the hotel in the North Plaza, like I said, the finish is in the North Plaza. The big roundabout area is going to be closed off for us to use. So that will be the bike drop, and that's what Neil was talking about earlier. Make sure you come back and get your bike, alright? Don't leave your bike behind. Get one each. Ah, if you're a winner, you get one each. So a team of three will get a trophy each. Okay? Any other important questions? The question was, are we running up the hill? The answer is, I'm not going to tell you because that's part of the course and it's secret. So don't ask me any questions on where the course goes. Are the helmets only for the bike cycling? Say again? Are the helmets only for cycling? Go. All the way. All the way. Okay. All right? Very important. Very important question. Somebody asked, is the helmet just for the cycling? No. The gloves and the helmet is mandatory from the start to the finish. Because if you fall over on the rocks, you're going to want that helmet. Okay? Do you need gears? You don't need them, of course it helps, but you don't need gears, okay? It's not mandatory to have gears, okay? No. On the Saturday, on the bike day, right? So just to clarify, the next stage is for you guys to turn up on Saturday morning with your bikes, okay? We will give out t-shirts to the competitors at that point. We give out bike numbers and things like that on Saturday at the helipad on the 26th, okay? Um, and also your bikes will be left there overnight. We'll lock them up in the compound because we know that they're safe and they're checked. Please keep the voices down. Okay, any other important questions? Green. The colors are going to be green. Don't worry, I mean, that's not an important question. So it'll be similar to that, but different, okay? Every year we have the same thing. Green shirts for competitors, red shirts for marshals. Hang on, can I, if it's, if it's a parent question, you'll have a parent chance in a minute, okay? Get competitive questions only, please. Urgent questions. Chris, 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 Thank you. There's a chop. I think you've had about three questions now. There's someone over there. I want to know my shirt. What if you need to go to the toilet in the middle? <laughs> Alright, the best thing 
second rule is to go to the toilet before the race starts, okay? So you won't need to go halfway through, okay? If you really, really, really do need to go halfway through, then one of our race officials will help you out. into the woods, we are also in the town areas, we are near toilets as well, and we've also got some magic bushes around as well. Okay?